Hey up! Mmm, <laughs> nothing like an egg and bacon sandwich. Hiya, I'm Karen Elson. What are we doing in Oldham? I guess we're going back to my roots, right? Retracing a lot of my um, sort of footsteps when I was young. Essentially see where it is I'm from. <laughs> No, I've only worn it once. I'm a bit just nervous as to where it's gone. It's a couture dress. Hmm. Okay. All right. Bye. <laughs> I knew he would. Perseverance pays off. This beautiful dress. It was made by the late, great Alexander McQueen, who is somebody I absolutely adored. Ooh. Oh, wow. Zach Poser made me this for his first fashion show. These first pair of shoes I ever nicked. <laughs> So this is my house in Nashville, Tennessee. Definitely feels like we're in um, England, even though we're in Nashville. I've definitely stayed true to where I'm from. I always ask photographers to give me prints, but they always give me prints of me. Welcome to my home, filled with me. Ta-da! <laughs> I designed this fireplace all myself. God, there's more pictures of me. Hide them, quick! It's this print over here. Stephen Mizell won. It was my first Italian Vogue cover, taken on my 18th birthday, and that was the shoot that essentially made my career. This gorgeous Grace Coddington that she gave me for my birthday. And gingers all love other gingers, so therefore this is a prized possession in my house. Hold on, how did I forget this? Wait, I love this so much. Tim Burton, I've never been so starstruck in my life. Oh my God, this is so wild. This is one of my first ever test contact sheets. It's so crazy. Literally, that's like the first time I'd ever been in front of a professional camera. This one too. I'm 15, God, my daughter's 13. It's like, it's just so mad. <laughs> I did a lot of like hair care modeling before. God, I totally forgot about all this. You know, some pictures I did when I was a teenager, some that, you know, it's like artful nudes that I realize now, God, I was just 15 years old, you know, and nobody was ever asking me if I was comfortable. No one would ask. Oh, this is a letter from my dad. Hi, Kaz, I stopped smoking, or should I say, I haven't had a cigarette since last Tuesday. <laughs> We are at my friend Mark's Strange Attraction Studios. Hello! Hi. How are you? Wait. Can I just have a listen to it? Then it goes back into the... Yeah. Yep. I like this song. I love this song. This is a great song. Yeah, I already need to be a lot Fade louder. Away. Can you turn me up and add verb? Oh, let me wander in the aftermath of love. Every song I write at least comes from something that has either been sort of bothering me, haunting me, or just in my mind, you know, for far too long. I can kind of move forward from that thing afterwards. I'm making like a lobster spaghetti. Hi. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Cheers, ladies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a friendship, right? And to Nashville. Tonight, I've got all my lovely Nashville ladies. Nashville has become my home in a really like wonderful way and in a real way that I feel like my friends are absolutely 100% my family. As you know, I'm going home to where I was born in Oldham tomorrow. And thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Cheers. 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 When I left home, I remember it so clearly. I remember leaving school and I was 16. And I remember walking out of the door saying to myself, I'm never coming back here. I jumped on the train the next day and went to London. Oh,
so good. <laughs> hey up. It's cracking flax today. It. To pa, to hospital. Chucking it down, of course. I rarely reflect. I'm always a sort of keep moving forward kind of person. So whenever I come back here, I'm sort of confronted with what I left. Everything that I have ran away from, essentially. I think because when I lived here, it was definitely not easy. I was bullied a lot and I don't think anyone really expected anything of me. You know, when I first became a model, I never told anybody. You have to remember it was like the era of like Cindy Crawford as well, where all the boys had posters of Cindy Crawford on their wall. And I was just weird. <laughs> I admit it, I'm still weird and it, thank God I am. But then I told one girl who then told the entire school, I'll never forget, they all laughed at me. You know, everybody coming up to me and saying, you're not fit to model socks. But I wanted more. You know, I was in the Kylie Minogue fan club when I was eight years old. I really was, I loved her. Until I moved into different, more goth territory, then I started getting into PJ Harvey and Nick Cave and Robert Smith. Oh, I had such a crush on Robert Smith. I think it was the video for Close To Me, that Cure song, and I was like, who is this amazing person? But yeah, my dad's um, apartment buildings are over there. It was a bit of a rough neighborhood. My dad didn't often let me and my sister, when we visited him, walk outside just because you never know what was going on. There really wasn't much to do when I was growing up. It was sort of wandering around the streets. That's all, that's all you really did. Maybe you'd find an alleyway and you'd nick your dad's lighter and you'd set a fire or two. I mean, that was... <laughs> but it was fun. I don't know, it was childhood. You just get into mischief. We're off to meet my dad at a pub that apparently was the first pub I ever went to when I was two weeks old, according to my dad. He probably already made friends with everybody in here. Hi, Dad. Hello. <laughs> oh. You all right? What have you been up to, sweetheart? What have I been up to, Dad? I hope you've not been bad. Oh, <laughs> never. <laughs> So this is my dad. This is the man, the myth, the legend, Skinny Jim. Not Affe so skinny. <laughs> <laughs> Affectionately known as the King of the North. My poor dad. He'd get my sister and then I would run off in the opposite direction and then he'd get me and I would escape and then run off in the opposite direction. <laughs> Took a good 45 minutes to get me to and my sister. To catch them both and get hold of them, bit scruff neck and get them in. So when I left, Oldham, uh, I was 16, I'd just finished school. She didn't look back and waved her or anything, no. I bought her an A to Z of London. We hadn't much money then, and I wrote inside, I hope this helps you find your fortune. Aww. And look at that. <laughs> you sure what helped you me. What you see here's the fortune. Because I remember having to borrow money off you and Mum yeah, as well. Yeah, and yeah. They were a difficult time, I'll tell you for why. Because a lot of models were abused then. But they, that right. was the difficult bit of it. That was the only concern, really, you know. Didn't like her going, but... but actually, I did consider, if I'd have had any more money, whether to move to Paris, to France, uh, to look after you. Oh. Uh, I you didn't know. tell you or Mum anything no. because I didn't want anyone to say, that's it, you're coming home. You know, and I think it's a reasonable thing to be afraid yeah. of. I mean, yeah. I lived in London, Paris, and Tokyo by yeah. the time, alone, by the time I was 17. I turned 17 in Tokyo. Didn't you say this was the first pub you took me and Kate to? This was the first pub they ever came in. How old were we? Two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks, six days, and 36 hours. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times we've sung Sunny Afternoon, right? A few times. Just a few remember times. singing it at uh, Olympics. Olympics. Yep. Yeah. The, closing uh, ceremony. The closing ceremony of the Olympics when they had all the models. Remember Georgia May and all those sweet girls. Kate and Naomi. Kate and I remember <laughs> Naomi loved you. Kate loved you. Kate <laughs> loved you. Got she on always like asked me Naomi, you know. She's very nice, Kate and Naomi. I've I love them. Pair of them in my <laughs> 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 so I love to live so pleasantly. Live this life of luxury. 
My first reaction when Vogue asked me to go back to Oldham was panic. Whew, all right, okay, this is gonna be intense. Because I haven't shared a lot of my past, it's almost felt like sort of this dirty secret. Why do I not like going home? Whenever I come out here, there was a sense of just sort of escaping reality. And then I would return back into Oldham and be confronted with what other people thought of me. You know, I stood out as different, whether I wanted to or not. Because long story short, ah, oh, I don't know, sorry. <laughs> oh. I had an eating disorder when I was seven years old. Um, I had a breakdown fully, a full nervous breakdown and I stopped eating for almost six months. Had to be admitted to hospital, they threatened me with feeding tubes. It was horrid. That's why I was teased, because I was so skinny and so frail and so introverted. And it was a long road of recovery. I was just always, I don't know, a really sensitive kid and became the target to playground bullies. Like eating disorder, it's like, I didn't look in the mirror and go, oh my God, I think I'm fat. It was just a coping mechanism. I was really overwhelmed by life. So my way of controlling the little I could control was by stopping eating. What often playground bullies don't realize is that there's so much going on to the person that they're bullying. And what I didn't realize, and what I do now is a lot of those kids who are bullying me came from really tough families, always. <laughs> In the back of my head was this, like I'm bigger than this, I'm gonna escape, I'm gonna get out of here. And that was almost like the dream. That's where I'm from. We didn't have Google Maps back in my younger years, so this was the only thing. It's also a good umbrella. Wait, I'm looking at the map the wrong way round. We are off to see Deborah Burns, who is the woman who, I guess, essentially discovered me. I met her and, when I was 15, and she signed me to a model agency. I'm really excited to see her. It's been a really long time. And God, do we have a history. Ah! Karen, <laughs> Elsa! Oh, God, Good to it's see been you. so long. You haven't changed a bit. Too long. Don't lie. No! <laughs> There's 23 of us now. We've got a big creative division, so hair and makeup. All your girls. Fashion styling, still life styling. Oh. Yeah, we've got the whole lot. And here, this is our new faces board. You'd have been on there oh, at one point. That gorgeous girl with oh, the head no. oh. This is the Karen Elsons of the future, my love, so. God. Okay. Come and look at this. I found some stuff. <gasps> your first application when you came to see us. Whoa. So that was the Karen Elson. I need this, look at that. Note the, note the comment. Strange looking, but... But fab. But fab, strange looking, but fab. <laughs> I would say that Strange, but today. fab. That, that, and that, is, that definitely applies. Teenage talent hits the spot. <laughs> <laughs> That's my school picture, look at that. In four short years, you can turn from a spotty pudding... <laughs> mean. Into a sexy, willowy beauty. There is hope for us all. <laughs> Hilary Alexander, I still know her. From Teenage Freak. <laughs> Freak. Trip down memory lane. So mad. Debbie. Let's have a look at you. <laughs> Beautiful. Chin down a bit, darling. Whenever you come back home, it always makes you reflect on the scope of your life. Looking at me as a young woman, you know, and seeing myself sort of in that environment, like wide-eyed, naive, and so excited. You know, there's one newspaper clipping where I'm backstage at Chanel with my sister. You know, I can just see in my eyes how excited I am. It's that moment of like, I'm finally here. It was a dream, you know, it was a dream to come from up north and be like, not just the person flipping through the magazine. I am in the magazine. It was thrilling.
I mean, look, there's been hard times. I definitely won't ever deny that. Despite like challenges in life, I wouldn't change a thing. Mm -hmm.